good morning everyone in the previous classes we discussed about what is shell scripting so what is a shell what is the scripting shell is a mediator between the user and the kernel scripting is nothing but set of commands we are executing using a file that is called shell scripting shell scripting is used to automate the regular work that we do repeatedly right for that we are going to use shell scripting there are several types of shells available out of all these bash shell is the most powerful shell that we are going to use in the last session we created several shell scripts and we are able to execute them and we discussed about variables variables are the placeholders to store the value those variables are two types one is environment variable and the second one is user defined variable environment variable means the variables which are using by our system user defined variables are nothing but the variables that we are defining to store our data so those things we discussed and we discussed about command line arguments also command line arguments the arguments which will pass to script at the time of execution now i want to execute one shell script for that shell script i want to supply some data so like this this is my script execution command for this script execution i'm giving a command uh, i'm giving some data in the runtime so these are called as command line arguments how can we access those command line arguments in the shell script by using these things we can access dollar hash represents a number of arguments dollar 0 represents script file name dollar 1 represents first command argument dollar 2 represents second command argument dollar 3 represents the third command argument dollar star represents all command arguments right and we discussed about comments also so if you want to comment a single line in the shell script hash we will use if you want to comment multiple lines like this we are going to write that then we discussed about conditional statements conditional statements are used to execute the commands based on condition if given condition satisfied then execute these statements else execute these statements if a given condition satisfied then if statements will be executed otherwise else statements will be executed you can write conditional statements ladder also if condition 1 satisfied execute these statements else if condition 2 satisfied then execute these statements else execute these statements like this so yesterday we have done one program on the conditional statements i am reading a color if a color equal to red then execute this statement if color equal to blue then execute this statement if a color is not red not blue then execute this statement like this we have done one program on conditional statements okay now here we can go for loops also working with loops in the shell script working with loops working with loops loops what is the purpose of loops conditional statements are used to execute and if condition is used to execute the statement only one time if condition satisfied if this condition started satisfied if this condition satisfied then execute this statement if a condition satisfied this statement will execute only one time suppose if a condition satisfied i want to execute i want to execute my statement multiple times okay now here if you want to execute if if we want to execute any statements multiple times same statement if you want to execute multiple times then we can use loops concept okay guys so what is the purpose of loops what is the main purpose of loops loops are used to loops are used to execute statements statements multiple times i want to execute same statement multiple times for that we can use a concept called loop concept so there are two types of loops available there are two types of loops available one is range based loop another one is conditional based loop so we can use two types of loops to execute the statements multiple times we can use two types of loops two types of loops first one is 
रेंज बेस्ड लूप एंड सेकंड वन इज कंडीशनल बेस्ड लूप रेंज बेस्ड लूप इज अवेलेबल एंड कंडीशनल बेस्ड लूप इज आल्सो अवेलेबल सो व्हाट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ रेंज बेस्ड लूप एग्जीक्यूट द लूप फॉर 10 टाइम्स आई वांट टू एग्जीक्यूट द लूप फॉर 10 टाइम्स नाउ फॉर दिस द एग्जांपल इज फॉर लूप फॉर लूप इज द एग्जांपल फॉर रेंज बेस्ड लूप आई वांट टू एग्जीक्यूट द लूप फॉर 10 टाइम्स देन आई विल गो फॉर रेंज बेस्ड लूप देन नेक्स्ट वन conditional basel loop execute the loop till the condition satisfied that is while loop for loop and while loops are available for loops are called as range based loops while loops are called as conditional basel loop okay now when we go for for loop for loop example for loop example i want to print the numbers from 1 to 10 i want to print the numbers from 1 to 10 okay so here i'm going to write echo dollar of i echo dollar of i that means i want to print one number i variable i is there i want to print i variable now here i want to execute this statement for 10 times so can we write like this echo 1 echo 2 echo 1 echo 2 echo 3 echo 4 echo 5 are we going to write like this are we going to write like this i want to print the numbers from 1 to 10 can we write the echo 10 times is it the best practice is it the best practice to print the numbers from 1 to 10 no we should not write the like this to print the numbers from 1 to 10 echo command i want to execute for 10 times so to execute the echo command for 10 times, we should not write echo for 10 times like this. We need to use a loop. Loops are used to execute the statements multiple times repeatedly. So how we are going to execute that loop concept? Now here I'm going to specify for, for loop I'm going to specify. Inside the for loop, first I will declare a variable. There is no data type here guys. So generally in the Java, we will declare integer i is equal to 0 or integer i is equal to 1. Int means data type. But in the scripting, there is no data type. Int is not available here. Directly, i is equal to 1. I am storing one value, value 1 into i variable. i less than or equal to 10. Until i less than or equal to 10, I want to execute this loop. For each execution, I want to increment i variable. For each execution, I want to increment i variable. Then do echo dollar of i. Echo dollar of i. Once it is done, then I will print done. It is done. This is my loop. So here, this is the loop for loop. It is a range based loop i is equal to 1 i am initializing i variable with 1 and i am writing i less than or equal to 10 that means i am giving a range this loop should execute for 10 times okay so now i is equal to 1 i less than or equal to 10 yes i value is 1 1 is less than or equal to 10 condition satisfied then execute one iteration once one iteration got completed i variable will be incremented now i value will become 2 2 less than or equal to 10, condition satisfied. Then second iteration will happen. After second iteration completed, then again I plus plus. 2 plus plus means it will become 3, incrementing. 3 less than or equal to 10, condition satisfied. Then execute one iteration, print the 3. After 3 is printed, then again increment it. It will become 4. 4 less than or equal to 10, condition satisfied. Then print it, then iterate. So until unless this condition is satisfied the loop is going to execute it is going to print 10 numbers so this is a loop concept loops are used to execute any statements repeatedly loops are used to execute any statements repeatedly either you can execute the statements repeatedly based on given range 10 times i want to execute this then you can go for for loop like this
Okay, guys. Now, so let's try to execute this for loop in our Linux machine now. Let's log in into that machine. AWS login. AWS login. EC2, go to our Linux VM. Start this instance. Once that instance started, let's connect to that. Copy its IP. EC2 user, private key that PEM file. Okay. Good. LS hyphen L. We have this. Now let me create one more script file vi for loop.sh. Inside this script, we are going to write like this for loop. Fine. Before this, we can give shebang slash bin slash bash right for loop i am writing for loop i am writing inside this for loop i am writing a range 10 i want to execute this loop for 10 times i want to execute this loop for 10 times to do echo dollar of i i is a variable which is holding the value i want to print it i want to print it okay then let's try to execute this along with the shabong Echo of I printing that. SH for loop dot SH is equal to 10. VI for loop dot SH. Think here some spaces are there. Yep, I less than or equal to 10. Now, say one second. Here also, I plus plus. Right, sh for loop dot sh. Now, can you see? Are we able to print the numbers from one to ten? Are we able to print the numbers from one to ten by using this shell script for loop dot sh? This is my script file. This is the script file which is used to print the numbers from one to ten. Echo command I am writing only one time, but it is executing for ten times. The reason loop is available when you go for conditional statement if a given condition satisfied the statement will be executed only one time if a condition satisfied you want to execute the statement only one time then go for conditional statement if you want to execute any statements repeatedly if you want to execute the statements multiple times then you need to go for a loop concept for loop i is equal to one I less than or equal to 10 I plus plus. So I less than or equal to 10 is the range. Until I value less than or equal to 10, you execute the echo statement. It is going to print that for 10 times. Okay. Now, similarly, similarly, we can we can use while loop also. What is this while loop? While loop is conditional based loop until the condition is getting satisfied you execute the loop until the condition is getting satisfied you execute the loop now 
I want to print. I want to print the numbers in the reverse order. I want to print the numbers in the reverse order. Okay. How can we print the numbers in the reverse order? First, I am going to take i variable with the ten. I am initializing i variable with the ten value. i is equal to ten. i is equal to ten. Now I want to check the condition using while loop. While while I'm going to specify dollar of i is the variable. If it is greater than zero, <clears throat> if dollar of i is greater than zero, then do then do echo of dollar of i. Echo of dollar of i. Once it is done, then I want to decrement the i variable. Then I want to decrement the i variable. In order to decrement the i variable, i minus minus, i minus minus, then done. So here, i is equal to 10. I'm storing the value 10 into i variable. Here my condition is available. If i value is greater than zero, then print i value then decrement. So once it will print it 10, then i value will become 9. 9 is greater than 0, then print it, then make it as 8. Once 8 is printed, then again, check the condition. Check the condition. Like this, it is going to print one value and will decrement the i variable. So this is a while loop scenario. In the for loop, it is checking a range. In the while loop, first it is checking a condition. First it is checking a condition. So this is a while loop. Vi while loop dot sh let us take this script here for this script you can write a shabong it is the best practice to specify which shell should be used to process our instructions i is equal to 10 while i is greater than 0 then print it then decrement the i variable value then done okay sh while loop dot sh now can you see the values are printing from top to bottom the values are printing from top to bottom when i execute for loop the values are printing from 1 to 10 when i execute for loop values are printing from 1 to 10 echo command executing repeatedly in the while loop also the command is executing repeatedly but the value that is printing is different in the for loop i'm printing from 1 to 10 in the while loop I'm printing from 10 to 1. Okay. So while loop will check the condition first, then it is going to execute the statement. While this condition is satisfied, then execute the statement. Then again check the condition, execute. Again check the condition, execute. Until unless the condition is getting satisfied, loop will execute. Once the condition fail, then loop will terminate. Repeated process. Repeated process. For every iteration, for every iteration, it is going to check the condition. If the condition is satisfied, if the condition is satisfied, it will execute the loop. If a condition is not satisfied, then it will terminate the loop. It will terminate the loop. Right. Suppose, for example, if condition is getting satisfied always, then that concept is called as infinite loop. Whenever you write a shell script, suppose you are condition is always getting satisfied while true while true do echo this is my loop this is my loop statement then done this is my loop statement then done okay let me write a shell script like this always my condition will satisfy infinite infinite loop dot sh so here i will try to specify shabong vi infinite loop dot sh insert mode shabong slash bin slash bash while true while true means condition is always becoming true always condition will be true then do echo this is my loop statement this is my loop statement 
then after this done right save it and close this let's execute sh infinite loop dot sh now see continuously the loop is executing continuously the loop is executing the loop is not getting terminated the loop is not getting terminated so if you want to terminate this is a infinite loop the loop which will execute forever if i come tomorrow if i keep machine keep like this and if i leave the machine like this if i come after tomorrow still the loop will be keep on executing this is my loop statement this is my loop statement so the loop is continuously getting executed if you want to stop it then control c so to stop the infinite loop we will use control c to stop infinite loop we will use control c if you press control c then you will come out from that infinite loop to stop infinite loop we will use control c so when the script will enter into infinite loop your condition is always satisfying here 10 to 1 after printing 10 to 1 loop is getting stopped why because condition is available if i value greater than 0 then only execute the statement otherwise terminate the loop if i value while i greater than 0 here condition is available if this condition is satisfied then only this loop will execute but in the infinite loop always while true while true print it 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 it will never stop always the condition is getting satisfied so when the condition is always getting satisfied then it will enter into it will enter into infinite loop what is the meaning of infinite loop the loop which executes forever the loop which executes forever is called as infinite loop the loop which will execute forever is called as infinite loop how can we come out from the infinite loops guys how can we come out from the infinite loop any idea how to come out from the infinite loop to come out from the infinite loop we are using control c control c is used to come out from the infinite loop good for loop while loop infinite loop infinite loop means forever okay next now we are learning this linux commands and shell scripting for our devops classes right so as a devops engineer we are going to work with our build and deployment operations those deployments we are going to do on the servers servers will be installed in the linux machines servers will be installed in the linux machines now so in this linux machine i am having a server in this linux machine i am having my server okay in this server our application got deployed in this server our application got deployed application is running here inside the server our server is available in linux machine our server is available in linux machine okay now what we need to do is as a devops engineer assume that so it depends upon the requirement i'm taking one sample requirement now i'm taking one sample requirement so daily restart server restart server and daily basis restart server and daily basis restart the server on daily basis delete old logs create new file create new file like this there are some regular activities that we need to do on the linux server restart the server delete the logs and create the new log file delete old log files delete old log files create new file in create new log file create new log file so like this we are having some requirement so i want to perform four activities four to five activities 
on daily basis restart the server delete the old log files restart the server means stop the server and start the server stop the server stop the server delete old logs delete old logs create a new log file create new log file start the server start the server check server connectivity check server connectivity like this these are the five steps i want to perform on my machine these are my regular activities guys these are my regular activities when i come to office then i want to perform these activities first right instead of doing these activities manually can i automate these activities by using a script now instead of doing these activities manually can we write a script can we write a script a delete instead of old logs suppose if the logs are 30 days old we are going to delete or else delete a temp folder delete temp folder data so when the project is running in the server temp folder will be created delete temp folder data create create new files create new files or directories which are required for us okay then start the server then check the server connectivity so when the project is running some temp folder will be created temp files will be created i need to delete the temporary files and i need to create some new files and i need to start the server and i need to check my server connectivity so these are my regular activities that i need to perform in my project every day instead of we are doing these activities manually we are going to write a script okay guys i'm going to write a simple i'm going to write a simple file a file now in this file if you write all the commands one after other one after other is it easy to manage the shell script if the shell script becomes huge then is it easy to manage the shell script all these activities i want to perform for all these activities i am writing some commands in the shell script will it become easy to manage that script file will it become easy to manage the script file when you write so many commands within the script file it will become difficult it will become difficult so that's why what we are going to do is what are the activities we need to perform by using a script we are going to divide that work into small small tasks task 1 task 2 task 3 task 4 task 5 so instead of writing all the tasks one after other one after other line by line we are going to divide our big task into smaller tasks so this is a big task that i need to perform i want to perform these activities so to perform these activities i need to work with a script file i need to write several commands in the script file if i write all the commands like this one after other one after other then it will become very difficult for me to manage that script file okay so if you want to maintain the script files if you want to manage them easily then whatever the big task is available for us we are going to divide the big task into smaller tasks how we can divide the big task into smaller tasks that's where functions concept comes into picture in the programming language it is called as a method in the scripting it is called as function f1 f2 f3 f4 f5 what are the five activities i want to perform for those five activities i'm going to create five functions so what is a function function is a logical unit to perform some action function is a logical unit which is used to perform some action instead of doing everything line by line we are going to create functions in the shell script what is the main purpose of the functions functions are used to divide the big task into small tasks 
I have a big task. Now I'm going to divide the big task into small tasks. So this is called function. Okay, that means logically we are going to divide the work of our script file functions. Functions. So what is the main purpose of a functions in the shell script? The big task, the big task can be divided into smaller tasks using functions. The big task can be divided into smaller tasks using function. Function is used to perform an action. Function is used to perform an action. Using functions, using functions, we can divide our work. We can divide our tasks logically. Functions are reusable. Functions are reusable. Once you create a function, then you can reuse the same function. Instead of writing the commands two times, you can write a function and that function you can reuse. The big task can be divided into smaller tasks using functions. Function is used to perform an action. Using functions, we can divide our tasks logically. Functions are reusable and we can easily manage our script file with the help of functions. Okay. Now, how to write a function? What is the syntax to write the function? The people who are from the programming background, you can easily understand what is function because we have methods in Java. We have methods in the Java. So the methods which we use in the Java, in the cell script, we are going to use functions. Method is used to perform a task. Function is also used to perform an action or used to perform one task. What is the syntax we are going to follow to write a function in the script file? Function, if you want to write a function, you need to use a keyword called function keyword. Function, function name function function name we are going to specify for the function we will write a body that means what this function should do that commands we are going to specify commands to execute so what commands you want to execute by using a function those commands we are going to specify in the function body this is the syntax to write a function now i want to restart the server I want to restart the server. So what are the commands we want to execute to restart the server? We will keep them in one function. So when we want to restart the server, we will just call this function. When we call this function, all the function commands are going to execute. All the function commands are going to execute. Now, let me write one function, writing sample function, writing welcome function i can say writing welcome function how to write a function and how to call the function i will start my script with the shabong slash bin slash bash to write a function we will use a function keyword function function name for the function we can give you a name inside this function we can write the commands to execute I'm going to give you a command called echo, which is used to print welcome to welcome to functions. Welcome to functions, right? If you just to write the function, is it going to execute guys? See this. If you just write the function, will it execute automatically? VI function one dot sh. So let me go for shabong slash bin slash bash function welcome function welcome inside this function i'm writing echo welcome to 
functions welcome to functions i created one function let's save this sh function 1.sh function 1.sh sh function 1 sh are we getting any output no function is available but i am executing that is the function is getting executed my script file contains a function my script file contains a function when i execute this script is my function executed my function not executed my function not executed so in order to execute a function we need to call the function we need to call the function what is the name welcome welcome is the name of the function so within the script file we are writing a function and we are calling the function so if you want to execute the function you need to call it sh function 1.sh now you see when i call the function my function got executed the commands which are in the function are getting executed there is a echo command which is printing welcome to function so like this can we write multiple commands within the function yes what are the commands you want to execute with the function all the commands you can specify in that echo welcome to functions i'm learning i'm learning shell scripting i'm learning shell scripting shell scripting shell scripting is used to automate our regular work is used to automate our regular work so three commands i have given three commands i have given here right save it sh function now see all the three commands are getting executed so logically we can divide the work logically we can divide the work by writing functions so you need to write a function you need to write a function and you need to you need to write a function and you need to call the function write the function and call the function able to understand write the function and call the function if you just write the function that function will not be executed you need to write a function and you should be able to call the function then only it is going to execute writing welcome function this is my function in this function function means logical part within this function i am writing some commands and i am calling that function when i call this function all the commands which are available in the function will be executed okay now i want to write a function with parameters function with the parameters function with the parameters good function with the parameters how to write a function with the parameters that means passing data to the function dynamically right now i am going to write a function now function welcome function welcome function body within the function body i am writing echo echo dollar of 1 somewhere we discussed what is a dollar of 1 do you remember do you remember what is the dollar of 1 guys do you remember what is the dollar of 1 dollar of 1 will represent first cmd argument what is the dollar of 1 dollar of 1 will represent first cmd argument dollar of 1 will represent first cmd argument okay now i am going to call this function my function is welcome for this function i will specify a argument i am calling the function for this function i am giving the linux as a argument now i will call the same function again by passing aws as a argument i will call the same function again by passing devops as a argument so same function i am calling with the three different arguments so i am giving a input for the function okay guys so i am calling the function by giving command line argument then 
that command line argument I am printing by using echo. I'm printing that by using echo. Are you clear? Are you clear? Right. Let's take this function. Let's take this function. VI function two dot sh. Specify this function welcome body echo dollar of one. I'm calling the function three times with three different arguments. Okay, sh function two dot sh. Now see what are the three arguments I'm printing. I'm able to print what are the three arguments I'm supplying. I'm able to access those three arguments cat function two dot sh cat function two dot sh so this is my function which is having echo dollar one as a body statement when this function is called this statement will be executed i am calling this function by giving linux as first time second time i am calling the function by giving aws as the argument third time i am calling the function by giving devops as the argument so all those three argument values are printing as per the function body as per the function body so like this whatever the work that you want to do instead of doing that file creation step by step all the commands it is highly recommended to divide your work into logical parts by using functions in the script file once you create a function set of commands will be there in the function body when you want to execute those commands, you just need to call the function. When you call the function, then those commands will be executed, which are available within the function. So we can reuse. Now see, same function I am calling for three times. And if you want to use one function can for multiple times also, you can do that. You can do that. Are you clear? What is function? Are you clear with this? What is function and how to write a function and how to call the function? Are you clear with this? What is function? How to write a function and how to call the function? Perfect. Perfect. Very good. Thank you guys. So with this, the basics of shell scripting, we are good. So this knowledge is sufficient for us to start with our DevOps. So while working with the DevOps, we are going to use Linux machines and we are going to use some shell scripts. So if you have this knowledge, then I can teach you how to write the script while we are working with the DevOps. Okay, when we are working with the DevOps, we need to create some scripts to automate our work and we need to start our servers. We need to stop our servers. We need to create some files. We need to create some directories. We need to create some users and all for that. So whenever we want to do some work with multiple commands, then we can create a shell script and we can execute the shell script so that we can automate our work by using this script. So these the prerequisites which are required for the DevOps we completed from the Linux. So we discussed about Linux operating system, how to work with Linux files, how to work with Linux directories, file permissions, file owners, users, editors, package managers, how to install softwares, how to deploy one static website. Then what is a shell scripting? What is a shell? What is a scripting? What is bash shell? how to write a sample script, how to execute a script, what is a variable, how to declare variables in the shell script, then what is command line argument, how to do comments in the shell script, what is if else condition, while loop, for loop, then functions also we discussed in the shell script. Okay, I'm going to upload this final class notes of the shell script into our portal. You guys can access 
shell script in the portal and coming to videos already the videos available in our youtube channel for the shell script as well as for linux also the pending videos i will upload in another 30 minutes already six videos available now i am going to upload seventh video and eighth video also in the same linux playlist so the people who don't have the videos access you can access the videos from here so this is the link where i'm going to upload the videos all right so that yesterday's video and today's video also i'm going to upload here thank you guys so from tomorrow we are going to start from tomorrow we are going to start aws cloud same timing with the same zoom link anybody who is interested to attend anybody who is interested to attend aws you can attend the classes from tomorrow tomorrow will be the introduction for aws cloud okay thank you guys